Hello there, my name is Tim Walter. I'm a house healer and an alternative life coach. And what I want to show you today is the way that we can actually affect the environment in which we live just with intent, focused intent. We can change the way that we live with the energies of our houses. And I want to show you three examples of people that have done that. Before they called me in, they've started work on their houses themselves, energetically speaking. And when they called me in and did the dowsing, I actually found evidence that this is exactly what they've been doing. Before we look at those three floor plans, I just want to remind you, click on the red subscribe button, click on the grey icon, the grey bell icon to get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to get in touch with me about house healing services or life coaching or mentoring, then just go to my website, www.knightsrose.com and use the contact form to get in touch with me and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So that's a little bit of housekeeping done. Now, you know, the thing is about all of this work, it's funny how so much of it we just don't accept. We haven't got the confidence to believe that what appears to be happening is actually happening. So for example, we're used to the idea that the moon can affect us. The moon for a long time has been known to affect the way that people behave. Some people are more susceptible to it than others. But you know, it's less accepted, of course, that there could be a direct, equally invisible influence from our immediate environment that can affect people too. Influences from the environment, when they affect us at home, are generally put under the catch-all title of geopathic stress. Now, geopathic stress isn't really a medical term as such, and it covers a whole range of uh, symptoms and uh, stems from all sorts of influences that we can pick up on. Generally, one can feel a kind of depression, a malaise, a heaviness. Sometimes we suffer from headaches just while we're at home or a nausea just while we're at home, or even it can manifest in a person simply as feeling at odds out of place when you're at home, which is the last thing you want, of course. Now, there are all sorts of influencing factors that can affect us. And if you're a highly sensitive person, then you're probably already aware of electromagnetic fields. And that's just one section that we look at when we do a healing on a house. There are actually 45 section headings that I look at in detail when I douse through a property to find out what is causing problems for a house owner. Now, what I'd always say, of course, is that if you're feeling unwell, always go and see your doctor, your GP, or your medical practitioner as a first stop. It's the common sense thing to do. But if they can't help you, then maybe it's worth contacting somebody like myself, a house healer, if you're suffering from the sort of symptoms that geopathic stress tends to present. Now, if you are suffering from geopathic stress, and if you are a highly sensitive person, then the chances are that you've already tried to do some remedial care, some remedial energy work on your house yourself. And that's absolutely fine. And what I want to show you now is these three floor plans where people have actually, as it turns out, started to do just that. So let's take a look at this floor plan. This is the first one I want to show you. I'm going to show them to you in the order that I came across them. And obviously I'm keeping the client's identity confidential, but I've got permission from each of these house owners to actually show you these today. So let me just explain what you're looking at because it can look pretty confusing to start with. You'll see that in black, you can see the ground floor layout of a house. Everything that you see drawn on here has been doused by me. And everything that you see here is actually a detrimental influence upon the people living in the house. This is not to say that each and every thing that you see is highly influential. Some of these subtle influences can be really subtle indeed. But these are what was shown to be significant and what required rebalancing or removing to help the owners work through the issue that they were facing. So what we've got here is that the green lines are earth energy lines. The red lines are what we call toxic lines. That's influences from modern structures or activities like industrialization, that sort of thing. The blue lines are underground water flows. The black triangles with the sort of inverted T's in them, they're electrical fields or what we'd call technopathic stress. The green spirals are earth energy flows, they're spiraling energy patterns. 
And the orange asterisks are emotional hotspots where high levels of human emotion have occurred. These are things like arguments or fights or very low depressed states, all of that sort of thing. So they're emotional input going out into the ether. But what I want you to look at in particular on this floor plan is this line here. This red line comes in towards the house. Its direction of flow has been doused, so it comes in towards the house and then it bends at a right angle and it bounces away through the conservatory. The original path of that line carried on straight through. When I had the follow-up session with the client, I asked him about this and he said, that's amazing. That is where I stood, he said, and did some dousing to try and shift the energies within the house. That was the exact spot where that line bent, that was the exact spot. And that was the first time that I'd come across that sort of thing. Now, when I was dousing it, the management upstairs, my spirit guide had been saying to me very carefully, he was very strict in his instruction at that point. He said, just follow what I'm gonna tell you. Follow it and just put it down. It won't make sense. It made sense when I spoke to the client. Now have a look at this. This is the second floor plan I wanna show you. This was a little while after finding that first one. Again, there's a lot going on in this. This lady was uh, very sensitive to external energy flows and she'd in fact, she'd been heavily influenced some years ago by all the activity in her house and had been through what we would probably call spiritual shock as a result. But the main thing is she was incredibly aware of energy flows around the house. When going through that period of change, that period of immense change in her life, she did various little ceremonies around the house in order to protect herself. And if we look at these two red lines here on the floor plan, we can see that they both bend. Very similar to what I showed you in that first floor plan. One of them bends at a right angle, just like we saw in the first example. And bear in mind that the perimeter of this lady's home is actually this hatched wall in the middle. It's a semi-detached property. So you've got, other, you've got another family living on the other side and this side to the, to the left is the lady's home. So actually what's happening there is that the protection this lady put in place directly affected the line as it touched her property. And it shows the influence at the boundary right in the middle there. Now the second line that she had uh, affected was coming down from the top of the picture, coming down towards the house from the top, and you can see that this one also bends uh, at right angles, um, and it skirts along the boundary wall instead of plowing right through where she lived. When these things started to show up on the floor plan as I was doubting them, um, I knew what I was looking at. I knew that I could see their similarities to the first client of the floor plan, and I could see that her protective exercises had some influence. Number three, so this is a mini report. Um, this has got less going on in it because a mini report only looks at a handful of uh, section headings rather than the full report, which as I say, covers 45 or so. But here, what you can see is that the green line bends. Now again, I did the dousing and when I was doing this one, the management upstairs, my spirit guide was very keen to say, right, be, pay attention, do what I ask, plot the line and I kind of knew at this stage it was the third time he'd done this so it's like okay right I'll have to be really careful and we got a bending line so I, I sent this through to the client and I said in the email full of confidence all oh, right well you've obviously been doing some protection work and and you've obviously been doing it here and she came back with the response no I was like oh okay so we moved on from that and didn't think anything of it. But then a few days later, it might even have been a week later, um, the lady dropped me an email and said, well, I've been thinking about this and uh, that point where it bends is exactly where my kitchen table is. And on my kitchen table, I have this. Now this, of course, is Lord Metatron's cube. So it uh, sounds a bit odd, but what Lord Metatron's cube is, is basically the symbol of Archangel Lord Metatron. Uh, he's a new uh, Archangel, and as my wife says, he always sounds like a transformer, but uh, I don't mean to be disrespectful. He's a very, very interesting Archangel, and this is his generally recognized symbol. So this symbol was sitting on the kitchen table of my client, and that is where the line bent. Now, what's really interesting about this one, of course, is that it appears that the sacred symbol itself 
changed the earth energy line, changed the direction of the earth energy line. Now, sacred symbols become sacred because they're given that intent. They are recognized as being uh, of uh, worth and influence. So it appears that Lord Metatron's cube, this symbol, actually was having an effect on the earth energy flow. Now, many people use this symbol as a sort of protective symbol. Lord Metatron himself isn't necessarily known as a protector as such, not like Archangel Michael, but many people use this sort of symbolism as a protection thing. Uh, I, to, to be completely fair, I'm not sure whether my client did or not, but in a way that's irrelevant because the point was the earth energy flow that could be doused had been influenced, so it appears, by, this, by the presence of this symbol. None of this is scientific, of course, and we need to be careful about making giant leaps and, and making massive delusional statements here. But what I'm trying to prove, try to illustrate, trying to prove, if you like, is that there is an influence that we can exert upon our environment. And these three floor plans seem to demonstrate that um, to me. So what have we got? In summary, what have we got here? Floor plan one, what did it show us? Well, very clearly, it shows that the line was bent at right angles. And that was doused following very careful instruction from my spirit guide. So from through intuition, right? We'll say that's intuition. And the client that had affected that line had been standing in that position asking for protection, asking for assistance in being able to sleep better. Floor plan two. So this lady had done various protection exercises around the house and it looks as though she'd had some success with these energy lines that were of very similar frequencies and they both bent in a similar fashion at the boundary of her property. Floor plan three, a sacred symbol that's recognized as being full of intent and is often purchased for protective purposes appears to affect the natural flow of earth energy at this point. So what does that suggest to us? Well, obviously, it does suggest that we can have an influence on the subtle energies around us. So if we're a highly sensitive person that is feeling like the environment in which we're living, our homes are adversely affecting us, we can do something about it. This to me is incredibly important, this sort of thing, because it illustrates to me, it demonstrates how we can influence the subtle energies around us. And once we change the subtle energies, then we start to make change in our lives. Things shift. How do we make that? I'll go into more detail about how we focus in on and use focused intent to do this sort of work with, with accuracy. But suffice it to say, as we draw this video to a close, that this to me is the real power of human beings. It starts to lift the lid, to open the door to our real potential and perhaps to what we really are as conscious beings. We do this work in association with conscious beings in other dimensions. Sometimes we call them angels, sometimes we call them archangels, sometimes we call them spirit. Sometimes we want to go higher, we call them management. But everything is done from the greatest good in connection with our heart, our thoughts, but always in association and in alignment with divine will. So in a way, it's like the layers of consciousness that not only we emit, but also the planet emits, become higher vibrational, perhaps as it gets further away from the earth, we don't know. But there are echelons of power, there are echelons of consciousness, and we can work with some of those upper echelons, if you like, to directly assist other people. And that's really fundamentally what house healing is about. That's the way that I work. And you can access that sort of energy too. You need to do some inner work. And that is what being a spiritual person, that terrible label, is really all about. It's learning to understand that now is the time for you to adopt your own power and to work with it and to see what happens as you work with it. Okay, so that gets a bit heavy on the end there, but never mind. So I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.